In this video, we're going to create a photogrammetry 3D model using Agisoft Metashape. If you want to follow along with me, I've left a link in the description to the photo set that I used. Simply download and extract the zip file to access the images. Check out my previous tutorials where I introduced photogrammetry, hardware requirements, and image capture by clicking on the link to the playlist. I hope you find this video beneficial. Hello and welcome to part 4 of my photogrammetry tutorial series. Today we're going to be processing our images into a 3D model. To start off, let's check out the images that we captured. Here I've got a bunch of photos that I took of this drinking fountain. These are all JPEG files that I loaded off of my DSLR camera. And flipping through them, we can kind of see that there's some sort of motion going on here. We can see that the images are clear and that the lighting is pretty well balanced. Everything looks well lit, and it's pretty decently in focus. As you can see, as I flip through them, there's pretty good coverage in these images. So you can see that I got a bit closer here to the subject, and I tried to get a little bit more detail. Today we're going to be using Agisoft Metashape. I'm going to go ahead and open Metashape. Metashape is a paid software, however they do offer a free trial, which you can try this out using the free trial if you want to follow along with me. I think Metashape is a pretty affordable software, which is why I choose to use it. However, there's some other alternatives out there as well that you can also explore. Okay, now we are inside of Metashape. The first thing you're going to want to do to create your 3D model is you're going to want to import those images. Now there's a few ways you can go about doing this. However, what we're going to do is we're going to drag the uh, Metashape window to the side of the screen, and then we're going to open up our images in this folder. Now I'm going to select all of the images in this folder just by highlighting them. And I'm going to simply drag and drop them into Metashape on the sidebar right here. As you can see, it created a new chunk. And if we expand this chunk by clicking this little arrow, you see the cameras and we can expand that. And you can see all these images here by double clicking them. They've all been loaded in. As you can see, it says zero out of 81 aligned. And now if you're looking for another way to do this, the other way you can import your images is you go up to workflow, add photos, and then you navigate to the file folder where your images are located, where you can then select all of them and then import them that way as well. Now, before we do any processing, there's one thing you're gonna have to make sure of. Go up to tools, go under preferences, and then select the GPU tab, and then check the box with your graphics card. As you can see, I've checked the GeForce GTX 1080 and GPU acceleration will make this process a lot quicker so be sure to make use of a graphics card if you've got one in the computer. If it's an integrated graphics card that's built into your CPU then don't do anything. If you know you've got a dedicated graphics card then definitely check this box. So we're gonna hit apply and then we are all set here so I'm gonna click OK and now we're going to begin aligning these photos. So to do that, I'm going to right click the chunk, go into process, and then select align photos. Everything here is all set and we're just going to click OK. So as you can see, it's currently processing and detecting the points. So we're just going to give it a minute and I'll be right back. OK, so we're back and as you can see, we've got our sparse cloud. So in order to rotate around, you're going to want to click and drag this sphere in the middle. And if you can see, as we drag it, we're kind of able to sort of weirdly explore this 3D model. Using the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can scroll in here. And by clicking down on the, mouse, the middle mouse button, you can drag around. You can also hold Alt and drag for the same effect. The first thing we're going to want to do is save the model. I'm going to do save as and I'm just going to save it as fountain model. There we go. So what I want to do here is I want to clean this up because you know the photogrammetry algorithm detected all of these points but a lot of them are points that we don't need. So all these points out here for instance all of these points are grass. So it detected a bunch of grass. So you can see all this grass here. And now if we look back on the 3D model, you've got all these green points. Now I don't really need the grass because that's not the focus of my composition. 
all I need is the fountain itself. So to do that, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select the circle selection tool. Just in this instance, we're going to use circle selection because my 3D model is a circle. I'm going to click and drag from the center, select all those points in the center there, and then I'm going to select this button right here, which is the crop selection. So what that does is it's going to delete all the other points except for the ones that I selected. I'm going to do that right here. And as you can see, it just removed all of those points. So to unselect now, I'm just going to hit the select tool and just click anywhere. And if I rotate around, as you can see, it's sort of carved out a little circle for us here. So the less points that we have to work with, the faster the photogrammetry process will go. Now, before we go any further, we need to expand the bounding box. The, ba the bounding box, also known as the, the region, is sort of this, this thin cube that's surrounding our 3D model. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to expand this so it, it fits over the model. So as you can see, the top, if I drag around here, the top of the fountain is being cut off, which means it's outside of the processing range. So I'm going to drag this bounding box up, bring this a little closer, and then move over here. So I'm, I'm dragging the middle mouse button and I'm clicking these little blue spheres. And now if I rotate around the 3D model, you can see it is now completely inside the box, which is what we want. And there we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now we're just gonna save what we've done and I'm going to go up to the chunk again, right click, process, and then select build dense cloud. Now we can just set it to medium. I recommend medium for most 3D models. I would not recommend ultra high unless you absolutely need to do ultra high, perhaps for some sort of bump mapping or some high resolution uh, 3D work. Most computers are not built to really handle an ultra high 3D scan. And now if we select advanced, you've got your depth filtering. All that depth filtering does is it lessens the amount of noise in your model. So aggressive means it will really smooth out the model. It'll, it'll smooth things out. Moderate, it, it will do so less. Mild is just a minimal smoothing and then disabled is zero smoothing whatsoever. I'm just gonna set it to moderate is, is reasonable. We're just going to hit okay. And it's going to process. So once it's finished processing, I'll be back. Okay, so now we've finished processing our dense cloud. So I'm going to go over to the sidebar here and I'm going to double click dense cloud. As you can see, we're getting something that's looking a lot more like the final 3D model. If we zoom in using the middle mouse button, you can see all of these tiny little points that make up this 3D scene. All I'm going to do right now is begin cleaning up these little areas, specifically this little floating area up here of floating points and looking around for any other places that need fixing. In order to isolate this area, I'm going to go up to the freeform selection tool and I'm going to select around these points and then select the delete key on my keyboard. Now we're just going to kind of go in here and we're going to find these little stray floating points and we're going to select them and remove them. Now there's one issue with the pipe right here on the 3D model and we're going to clean that up right now. The issue is we've got all these strands coming off of the pipe. What this is, is it's the background of the photogrammetry. It's the background of the photos being detected within the geometry. So to get rid of them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this edge of the pipe and then go up and we're going to use this, this edge to our advantage, this straight edge. We're gonna select the points and as you can see, we've got a clean straight edge. So when I delete it, it's kind of clean and goes along with the, th the line of the, the pipe. So I'm just kind of intuitively selecting these floating points. The more you do photogrammetry work, the more you'll sort of get an understanding of, of what points shouldn't be where they are. However, at the moment, um, if you're a beginner, it's, it's totally reasonable if you don't entirely know what these points look like. All I can say is they kind of look like little little stray areas. So yeah, it's just a process of essentially 
removing the little stray points. And it takes a little bit of time. The more time you spend, the more quality your 3D model will come out. The last thing I'm personally going to do is actually bring back the circle tool one last time. And I'm going to select a circle radius right here just so I can isolate the, the, the stone. Now, once you're finished cleaning up your dense cloud, we're ready to create a mesh. A mesh is essentially the computer's way of understanding 3D. So it's going to take all of these points and turn them into little interconnecting triangles. Right click the chunk, go under process, and then this time we're going to select build mesh and everything here looks good. You can set it to high, medium, or low. It doesn't actually make a difference because it just decimates it in the end. So if I were you, medium is fine. High is definitely overkill. I'll just do medium, actually. I think that works. And we're just going to select OK. So now it's going to generate our mesh, and I'll be right back once it's finished. Okay, so we're really close. We just finished processing the dense cloud into a mesh, and now I'm going to double click the 3D model. And once we do that, we're now previewing the mesh. So the mesh is a lot like the dense cloud, except it's gonna run a bit smoother on your computer because it's a lot more optimized. And it's a little blurrier because we don't yet have a texture for this. We just have colors to work with. So now let's try previewing the wireframe. Select this up here and select wireframe. And if we look at the wireframe, whew, there's a lot of triangles. We're talking, uh, we're talking 251,000 triangles right here. To reduce the amount of triangles in the 3D model is a good idea because it's gonna save you a lot of memory, a lot of uh, performance, depending on what you plan on doing with the model. We're just going to do a quick poly reduction on this model. First, you're going to want to save a copy of what you've got here. It's important that you do save as right now and save a backup copy. I'm just going to call this Mountain Fountain Model Backup. There we go. So now I'm going to go back here to the 3D model and I'm going to go to Tools, Mesh, and then Decimate Mesh. Now, right now we're at 251,000. You can set your target face count. I'm going to drop it down to 20,000. Believe it or not, guys, you don't need that many triangles. As you can see, it just decimated the mesh, and right off the bat, there's a lot less triangles, which is pretty nice. Now, to be honest, I'm tempted to go even lower here, which I'm going to do just for a moment. I'm going to drop it down to 10,000. As you can see, once we're getting down to 10,000 is when we're starting to uh, possibly lose a little more detail here. If I go under Shaded, Honestly, it still looks pretty good to be honest, so we're going to stick with that actually. What I'm looking for is any weirdness in the geometry, but honestly everything looks pretty smooth on these edges. So I have nothing to worry about. Now the last thing we're going to want to do is build a texture. To do that, right click Chunk, Process, and Build Texture. Currently for our Build Texture settings, it's set the resolution is set to 4096 by 4096. 96, I believe. 8196 and a single texture. We're going to do one texture, generic, mosaic. All of this looks good. Let's hit OK. Now the texture is processing. So I'll be back in a few minutes once the texture is finished processing. And ta-da! As you can see, our textured model is complete. To view the textured model, go up here and then select Textured. This is where you can also view wireframe, so select Textured here, and you'll see your model in its nice textured form. And if we zoom in here, if we zoom in here, just wow, we've got some really nice detail going on here. All the little cracks and stuff. So now, we're going to export this 3D model into a file by going up to File, Export, and Export Model. 
I'm just going to save it as an OBJ file. However, an FBX file is more optimized and smaller, so normally I'd recommend an FBX, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to be doing a OBJ. Object file. I'm just going to call this Fountain 3D. For export texture, typically you're going to want to export the texture as a PNG for maximum quality. For the sake of this tutorial, however, I'm just going to export it as a JPEG file and then select OK. As you can see, where we exported the 3D model, you've got this weird unwrapped texture thing, which is your texture for the 3D model. It's going to look something like this. It's kind of funky looking, but this is your texture. That's what wraps around your 3D mesh. So you've got your texture file and you've got your object file in the folder. And there we go, we are all set and your 3D model has been exported. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're interested in more creative tutorials and feel free to comment if you have any ideas or questions.